Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sam Miles and Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In previous videos I explored the use of the Orion 3 space plane and its carrier plane. The Orion 3 space plane is from 2001 A Space Odyssey and it was meant to use a carrier plane even though that did not make an appearance in the movie. Uh, so the carrier plane gets it to fairly high velocity and about Mach 10 and then the space plane continues on to orbit while the carrier plane just lands at another location. And in the previous videos, I launched from Brownsville and landed at Cape Canaveral with the carrier plane and verified that it was reusable. In fact, we didn't even need to use the jet engines that I had put on the side and the kerosene that they might have used. I didn't need that at all. And the space plane was also recoverable, though uh, that was a little bit tricky, but we managed it. Uh, the, in this case, the space plane is using two Prometheus vacuum engines, these are methane oxygen engines, and the carrier plane is using nine Raptor engines, actually. So it's all methane and oxygen, even though in the movie it would have been advanced propellants, of course. So it was supposed to be futuristic, uh, though methane and oxygen was pretty advanced from the 1960s. But anyway, my thought this time is what kind of payload capacity can we get with the carrier plane. If we gotta put just a regular second stage on top of it, replacing the space plane, and yeah, what can we get from different configurations? So, without further ado, let's bring one out. First, we are going to test kerosene and oxygen with a Merlin second stage. So, this is just a Falcon second stage with a Merlin 1D engine. Fairly straightforward, and the payload that I'm attempting is 42 tons. So it's a 42 ton payload. I'm sure Elon would appreciate that. And again, we, we don't need to reserve fuel in the carrier plane in order to recover it. It can even just glide back down. Um, and I think we are packing some kerosene in case we needed it. Yes, we are. So in case we needed the jet engines, we have about 12 tons of kerosene. So that's pretty, that's quite a lot. Uh, for diverting to another airport or whatever. Uh, but we are going to launch from Brownsville and see if we can get this 42 tons to orbit. Now, technically, this should be launched uncrewed because the carrier plane experiences very high G loads coming back down because it's suborbital. And yeah, we wouldn't want actual crew to be on there despite the windows. That's just because I'm using a duplicate model of the Orion 3 space plane sized up. But, well, not the duplicate, the back end is different. Anyway, but yeah, we won't kick Valentina out this time, but technically she shouldn't be in there. And we're not following the carrier plane anyway. We just want to see if the payload gets to orbit. So, running the launch script, I'm using a consistent launch script for all launches because we are going to test other engines and see what they can do. So again, nine Raptor engines here. The launch ship does seem to have this roll wiggle problem. I can turn on SAS and stop it, and that works. But then I get this message because apparently the maker of KOS does not like me. <laughs> and I can't turn it off. It's all right for newbies to get that message, but I can't even get a way to turn it off in the... Well, I mean, uh, having SAS on does create issues, but um, it can also solve issues sometimes, like that roll wiggle. Actually, by now it should stop. Yeah, it'll settle down. I don't know why it happens. It's only at very low levels, and then past a certain height it starts up again. And that's true with the Orion 3 space plane as well. At least in 1.11. I forget if it ever happened in 1.8.1. Yeah, the previous videos with the Orion 3 space plane I think were in 1.8.1. This is the first time in 1.11. Which probably means I should test the Orion 3 space plane again, huh? Yep. Here it goes again. So yeah, we are launching from Boca Chica. Not that SpaceX would ever make such a thing, but... Who knows? We are using Raptor engines, though. And the Merlin, of course, in this case. 
there is a bottom limit to how light the payload can be. If it's too light, then it's not very efficient because we end up having to stop the engines before we've depleted the fuel in the carrier plane. And that's because we would otherwise overshoot Cape Canaveral. You see, we're uh, headed to Cape Canaveral on this path. But if we carry too light a payload, then we would overshoot and the carrier plane would not be able to slow down in time to land at Cape Canaveral. We'd have to have somewhere like in the Bahamas or something. It is rolling over. That's one nice thing about this compared to other uh, airdrop sort of situations and why we can carry the thing on the back. Unlike with Max and the AN-225, that's a much bigger problem because it stays in the atmosphere. By the time we let go of the Falcon stage, we'll basically be in space. So there's no air resistance to cause problems. Also, I put separatrons on the carrier plane. Heating is also a problem, also the g-forces, so if the carrier plane is going too fast, it can rip apart, and basically a surface velocity of 4,000 meters per second this is orbital velocity. The surface velocity of 4,000 is about the limit. And you can see the trajectory there. So yeah, if we go too much further than that, that's no good. Well. The Merlin is lit, and sorry for not catching the separation, we'll try and get it on one of the other launches that we test. Bearing set. Bearing set. Just a very simple payload. Av gas. Okay, we're in the final phase, getting to orbit here. Estimate was pretty darn close. So we'll see if we come out on the right side of that. I do have some experience running this kind of test. Okay, with 59 meters per second left, and just verifying. Yep, I guess we should switch. Oh, it considers it uh, debris. Anyway, it was 42 tons. <laughs> Can't switch to it because it thinks it's debris. Oh well. Okay, well. We are going to try out a different engine. And this time I decided to go with a Raptor Vacuum. Now Raptor Vacuum is heavy and it probably has more thrust than we need, though the Prometheus engines combined, we had two of them on the Orion 3 space plane, the Orion 3 space plane. We had two and that's about 2000 kilonewtons, so it's not too far off. And yeah, 48 ton payload is what we're going for. And you can see the configuration here. So let's see if it works. Now because the Raptor is more powerful than the Merlin engine, we have loaded more fuel. And I just added a sort of extension tank here to the regular Falcon upper stage there. So overall the payload on top of the carrier plane is heavier this time. Which is for the best, actually. Uh, we, we're only we're still only doing 160, uh, 164 tons. The Orion 3 space plane fully loaded up is about 170. As far as reusable first stages go, I like this the best, and that is mainly because I hate having to land stages vertically. <laughs> I like horizontals better. I, it's just more, much more elegant. And hitting a particular spot without, you know, fancy aerodynamics. I know, I know the grid fins and all, but uh, in Kerbal Space Program, the grid fins are not as powerful as I'd like them to be. Uh, or influential, we'll say. They're not very influential. But uh, yeah, good old fashioned wings here make me happier. Okay, we are rolling over. In the middle of the rollover we turn off the bottom four engines for balance. That's mainly a thing for the Ryan 3 space plane. I don't know if it says... that's probably important here too. 
All right, separation, ignition of the Raptor engine, Raptor vacuum, of course. And we can see the current trajectory, a fine path to Cape Canaveral. Of course, it can glide a bit too, but it'll probably use its wings to slow down rather than gain too much more lift than it has right now. We could carry heavier upper stages, but then we'd also have to pack more powerful engines. This this could probably be heavier. We could probably pack more fuel on it. So it's possible that the Raptor vacuum can carry more than what we're carrying right now, but not too much more because... Uh, but yeah, I think it'd be suboptimal. So right now we're carrying 48 tons. Yes, it's sad to dispose of a raptor, but they're churning them out like hotcakes anyway. They can't be that expensive. Yep, it's got lots and lots of power as we'll make orbit before even reaching Cape Canaveral there. Bit lopsided. Uh, that's, yeah, we'll have to fine tune that a bit, but it did make orbit. 93 meters per second lift, so 48 tons is about right, though again, we could probably add some more fuel and maybe get a little bit of a higher payload. But let's move on to the next one, Hydrolox. Okay, of course with Hydrolox we have a fatter tank in order to accommodate the hydrogen and oxygen, the, well, the low density hydrogen in particular. And I've chosen to use the Volcane 2 engine because it is light. It is not very efficient. Uh, it's not as efficient as, say, RL10s or um, the RS25, for instance. But the RS25 is heavy. RL10s, I don't even know if they'd fit right, but uh, uh, wouldn't provide enough thrust. We need, uh, you know, between 1,000 and 2,000 kilonewtons is what we were looking for. J2X is actually pretty heavy too. J2 itself might work, but that's actually less efficient than the Volcane 2. Uh, so, uh, though I guess you could put a nozzle extension on it to make it a little bit better, but then it, that would make it heavier. So overall, it's it's not bad in terms of the, the things that we're looking at. We want to optimize dry mass as well as ISP. So anyway, that is where we're at, and the payload we are carrying is 52 tons this time. And you can see there we we are pushing the limits here a little bit more, so 168 tons. So running the launch script again. No differences to the launch script, though uh, it could probably be tuned up a little bit for the Raptor launch. And the roll wiggles are annoying. The wiggling probably has something to do with the control surfaces. I'm not sure. Obviously I have other rocket launches that don't do this. I feel like aerodynamic surfaces seem to complicate things for KOS or in general even smart ASS sometimes. Locking the control surfaces isn't as easy with far as with stock so or maybe, uh, I guess it's far that changes the way that they're controlled. It does sort of stabilize once we start this roll though, which is interesting. All right, separation. And Volcane 2 is active. I don't actually know if it can air start, but <laughs> we'll set that aside for now. Fairing set. Whoa, that, that other fairing went very different. I don't know why. May I accidentally clicked on something like reduced its force or something like that when trying to click something else. Okay, we're about to make orbit. Well, hopefully, it's pretty tight here. It overshot a little bit and had to point down somewhat. And... Just barely makes it 17 meters per second left. 
So, again, uh, 42 tons with the Merlin, 48 tons with the Raptor, 52 tons with the Vulcane 2, and last we are going to try a Timberwind, which is a nuclear thermal propulsion system, and we'll see what it can do with a ginormous liquid hydrogen tank. Well, there it is, the huge liquid hydrogen tank, as you can see. This particular configuration poses the most problems as it has a long burn time. Uh, we're using the Timowin 75, so 75 tons of thrust, and well, we have 143 tons, well, maybe probably 141.8 for it to deal with, and so our initial thrust weight ratio is 0.5, our max thrust weight ratio is 0.8, so we never actually get to a thrust weight ratio of 1. Uh, again, we do have to load that much onto the carrier plane, otherwise the carrier plane is not optimally used. And in fact, uh, it probably, just for safety's sake, should shut down its engines early in this case, but we'll let it run through. And our intended payload with this is 58 tons. Of course, it would be a very expensive engine, so not too sure it would be the most optimal use of it, but hey, just for curiosity's sake, let's see what happens. I don't know if it's going to make orbit or not. Interesting, it stops doing the roll wobble here. Is it going to start up again? Huh. Oh no, it's wiggling a little. Oh, there it goes. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, but the, it is turning right now, though. Stabilized. Huh. Why is this one stable? Now I've got to figure that out. <laughs> completely randomly this configuration does not have the roll problem with the thing wiggling. Now the other ones also did not have the roll problem between 1,300 and 13,000 uh, meters um, but this one didn't have it early on either and we'll see what happens beyond 13 kilometers oh no it started doing the roll wobble here so much for there being some nuclear magic stabilizing it. It actually got stable much faster than the other ones. It's gotten stable again pretty quickly. I don't know what happens at 12.5 kilometers to make it wiggle like that, but... Oh well. Probably something aerodynamic and the fact that this is such a aerodynamic burden. Well, we definitely had to turn off the bottom engines for this one. The yaw is being nearly maxed out there. It's acting as the pitch because we're sort of 90 degrees off. And separation and a very slow ignition for the Timberwind. Slowly building up. 980 seconds ISP. And again, the 75 tons of thrust, or 735 kilonewtons. And we have a long way to go. I'm gonna fizz warp. Hopefully it doesn't produce too much physical inaccuracies, but first, fairing set. All right, well, adding the numbers up, it's fine, right? We've got more than 7,800, we've got 8,400, but we have to account for the really low thrust weight ratio and long burn time, so we'll see. It's pitching up, which it should do. Okay, well, I think we're all rightish here. At least, you know, it doesn't seem like it's gonna plunge back into the atmosphere, let me put it that way. And we still have about the right amount. We have definitely passed Florida. 
Still got a little bit of ways to go until orbit. Oh, it's close again. <laughs> really close. Now, I did not pick the lightest tanks. We just went with the default procedural tanks for these. If we use, like, lithium or something, uh, aluminum lithium, I mean, that might have been better. Very marginal. Ooh, 11 meters per second. But we managed it. So, yes. That can do 58 tons. So, 42 for Merlin 1D. Uh, 48 for Raptor, Volcane 2 did 52, and the Timberwind did 58. So there you have it. Interesting testing with the carrier plane for the Orion 3 space plane. And maybe I'll put it to use. It's, uh, it's an interesting alternative. It's clearly got some capabilities. Probably not good to use the Timberwind. Um, Unless we find a way to reuse it, but it's a pretty small tank for that. But I'll think about it. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.